Many of you won't be familiar with this story about how a serial acquirer in Australia completely blew up. It was called ABC Learning Centres and they were childcare centres and yeah, this was based out of Australia. Let me just jump into the timeline and tell you how crazy the story is. Okay, so it started in 1988 as a one childcare centre in Brisbane. Eddie Groves was the founder CEO and he had big dreams of rolling up the childcare space. He considered childcare an essential need for the Australian population, which I guess it is. Then 13 years later in 2001, he had acquired and grown to now 43 childcare centres. That seems like a lot in a 13 year period, but let me tell you, he's only just getting started. Because just two years later in 2003, he leveraged right up and acquired another 230 childcare centers in those two years. And then just after like two more years later in 2005, he kept raising money and he got to 697 childcare centers throughout Australia and New Zealand. Then by raising even more money, he purchased 467 centers in the USA. That's That was almost doubling the business again immediately. Now this was all debt and equity fueled growth, but the company's profit and loss still actually looked pretty strong. They were doing 300 million in revenue and about 50 million of it was in profit. So these strong margins and profit lines helped raise even more money. So you can imagine this as a publicly listed company, they're growing amazingly fast and they've got good margins and they're showing all this profit. Like the stock was on a tear. By 2006, they were growing at four centers a week. And they made more big acquisitions by buying the fifth largest company in the UK and the second largest in the US. At its peak, the company had 2,400 childcare centers on three continents and was valued at about $4.1 billion. It was the largest childcare business in the world. Now, in 2007, there were some criticisms starting to emerge. Childcare was actually subsidized by taxpayers, yet ABC Learning was profiting from this. So that was giving a bit of a bad taste to the general public, seeing all this profit being made for a tax subsidized program. Staff, like childcare staff, were paid pretty poorly and there was a lot of cost cutting and it was getting revealed that ABC Learning Centers were a pretty low standard product. The places needed renovations all over, but they just weren't spending the money on them. Then through the aggressive acquisitions in Australia, it had become kind of a monopoly, raising concerns over anti-monopolistic behavior. There was also like these random little stories about like children escaping from the childcare centers and getting found on the streets like in parks and car parks and like there were some weird stories coming out. Now things started to change in late 2007. Debt had reached now $1.8 billion and there was a sudden drop, drop in profitability from the start of the GFC. Things just, the music had kind of stopped and it meant that the massive debt obligations, they weren't able to be repaid. Profit was essentially just slashed. The revenue was dropping and then, but the debt was just so big, the interest payments were essentially like all of their profit that only in the good times, but now some tougher times were coming. Yeah, it wasn't able to be repaid. Now the share price fell dramatically and the directors and the CEO, Eddie Groves, they had leveraged themselves to the teeth and they actually were margin called on their own shares in the company. And after all the margin calls getting sold, Eddie Groves and his wife had sold completely out of the company. Don't worry, they made plenty of money out of this too. What I find interesting about looking back at this was I found this article from March 9th, 2008, where Eddie Groves talks about why he sold his entire stake in ABC Learning. Just listen to this. ABC Learning Center's founder, Eddie Groves, has sold his entire stake in the childcare empire, but says the business is solid despite its financial crisis. On Thursday, Mr. Groves offloaded almost all of his shares, $12 million, at $2.14 apiece, after margin calls were made on his holdings. He was left with only 3,000 ordinary shares worth about $4,500. This is in the company he had built up from a single childcare centre in Brisbane 20 years ago. Mr. Groves recently returned to Australia after selling 60% of the company's US assets too. Today, he attended the annual conference of Australian and New Zealand directors in Brisbane, where he was expected to reassure staff that the centres would not close. He said, my stake as of right now is I have no shares in ABC. Unfortunately, you know, that's what's happened in amongst this process. But Mr. Groves said staff and parents with children in the centres should not link the company's financial crisis to its day-to-day -day operations. He said, I think there's a lot of interesting things that are happening out in the share market today. 
I don't know if they have too much relationship to what business is actually doing. At the end of the day, this is a very solid business. We've been here for 20 years. I think we'll be here for a lot longer than that. And really, I don't think there's too much link between the share price and the strength of the operating business. Mr. Grove said Australian centers would absolutely not close. When you have fear and a frenzy in the marketplace, it can do amazing things. And I've seen amazing momentum and a negative sentiment gathered in the last two weeks. I think that's something that's, you know, a bit sad, he said. At the end of the day, there's 16,000 people in Australia and New Zealand that rely upon us doing a good job and we have done a good job. Okay, so that was from March 9th, 2008. In September 2008, Eddie Groves was replaced as the CEO. In November 2008, share trading was halted as the company didn't submit their financial reports. And then a few days later, they went into receivership and the 2,400 childcare centers now closed with tens of thousands of childcare workers now without a job in the depths of the 2008 financial crisis. Now, if you investigated Eddie before 2008, well, his lavish lifestyle was not going to be unnoticed. He owned two Australian basketball teams. He was chartering private jets for his birthday celebrations around the world by starting in Las Vegas. He had helicopters, Ferraris, yachts in the Versace Marina. Then there's all these accounting irregularities that were emerging from the collapsed company. Then ignore the allegations of conflicts of interest that allegedly enriched various family members on construction and maintenance contracts. The scandal and the rise and fall of Eddie Groves is how anyone could just get seduced into the fantasy tale of the roll-up strategy in the first place. Australia's biggest banks believed him. They're still owed $1.1 billion between them. And even more amazing was that the Singapore government's investment arm, they tipped in like $400 million as well, which they never got back. So despite sophisticated investment models and analytical tools employed by the big banks and these investment businesses, and they're supposed to be these smart minds, Despite all of the high-powered like due diligence that they should be doing, they miss what's very obvious, that childcare centers just don't have big fat margins. They are hard businesses to run profitably. I don't know how the banks didn't compare ABC Learning Centers with any other childcare center or ask anyone who was running a childcare center how the finances look. Economies of scale weren't ever adopted by ABC Learning Centers because it could never be done. Childcare is labor intensive. It requires skilled labor by individuals devoted to the task, not just cheap paid labor. Eddie and the company just they couldn't lower the cost base of a family run operation. His business merely added to the cost because of the enormous amount of administration required to maintain the compliance demands of a publicly listed company. And then obviously the director's remuneration was out of control too. And when the music is playing, it's kind of a neat strategy because no one can ever compare the performance with the previous year. There is always these one-off costs associated with the last big acquisition. The idea is that if you just keep juggling the balls so that no one can ever really count how many you have in the air. And then when Eddie ran out of childcare centers to buy in Australia, he just turned his attention overseas. And the banks were happy because their job is to lend money and they picked up these handsome fees on the transactions. Eddie was happy because the bigger the company, the more he could pay himself. And the investors swallowed the whole story hook, line and sinker that they were part of this expanding international empire. Now in the aftermath, Eddie has fallen from these lavish heights. He may only be worth a fraction of his previous fictitious wealth, but at least he has a decent amount of ca- in cash and has more than most families would ever be able to amass. And don't get me wrong, Eddie is a piece of work and he absolved himself of all the blame. It was apparently short sellers who brought him undone, working in tandem with bad stockbrokers. And then of course he blamed other directors and those in charge of the company that were running the Australian operations that let him down when he was overseas in Las Vegas or wherever he was partying away or making acquisitions. So after this story, I thought about why do serial acquirers blow up? And this is what I've come to. One is they take on too much debt. The second thing is they make many acquisitions in a short period of time. They're just too aggressive. Three is they have outrageous incentives and remuneration packages for the executive. Four, they're trying to centralize and roll up similar businesses to find synergies, but doing it when synergies aren't actually going to work. 
the centralization process doesn't work in all industries. And five, it definitely won't work with a loose, flashy founder CEO. Now, I spent a lot of my time looking for the great serial acquirers. I track a handful of my favorite ones in a weekly email called Yes Stocks, No Stocks. There's a link in the description below. And the companies that I follow, I think, have high integrity management and aren't going to turn into an ABC learning. But it's good to learn from these stories about red flags, about potential serial acquirers now. Because the story, like 15 years ago, people have probably going to start forgetting and it's going to replicate itself somewhere in the world. Anyway, that was a fun story and I hope you've enjoyed.